Hi everyone, this is Abhinav from Phonebench and today we are going to review the Moto E 2nd Gen 2015 model. Now this is the 4G variant. We have already reviewed the 3G variant. This one comes with a Snapdragon 410 quad core processor, 4G LTE connectivity, the rest of the specs including 1GB RAM, 8GB ROM, 5 megapixel rear and VGA front facing camera remain the same. You have a 4.5 inch IPS display, you have a QHD panel over here. Now on the right you can see you have the volume rocker and power button. They are a bit mushy but they have good travel at least. At the top you have the 3.5mm audio jack. The side band is textured which makes it better to grip. At the bottom you have the primary microphone as well as the micro USB data syncing and charging port. Moving to the back you have a secondary noise cancellation mic, 5 megapixel autofocus camera capable of recording 720p videos over here and the classic Motorola dimple. The back has a matte finish. It has a curved surface as well, so it's better to grip in one hand. Now let's open up this sideband. We'll have access to our micro SD card slot and you have two micro SIM card slots over here as well. It is a dual SIM device. The first SIM card slot can accept 4G SIM cards. Now you can buy these sidebands separately from Flipkart. You can get them in three colors together and these are built absolutely same as the one that comes with the device. And moreover, these completely change the look of your phone. So you can see a splash of color on the white model. The blue one looks best here. Now coming to the front, you have proximity and light sensors. You have a VGA front facing camera. The speaker phone and earpiece are integrated right there as well. On screen buttons over here and a 4.5 inch QHD display, giving this phone a pixel density of 245 pixels per inch. The bezels are not that large. The display has good color reproduction. You can see that right here, excellent touch response, it is protected by Corning Gorilla Glass 3 and you have an anti-smudge coating on top as well. Now coming to network and call quality, we didn't have any major issues over here. This phone retains network quite well, I wasn't able to test out 4G capability because it's not available in Delhi as of now. You do have mobile hotspot, Bluetooth and USB tethering, GPS is also available and it does work quite fine. Now let's get to the camera. You can double twist your wrist to open up the camera app just like the Moto X and this time around the camera app has received some changes. Apart from spot metering of exposure as well as focus, you can now manually adjust the exposure level as well. You have HDR mode available. You can record 720p videos with this camera as well. You have a timer available right here as well. You can see right there 10 seconds or 3 seconds. You can choose storage location, add a location to your files as well. Widescreen images can be captured in 16 by 9 or full 5 megapixel images in 4 is to 3 aspect ratio. Now in the time that I've spent with the Moto E 4G, it actually has a better camera than the Moto E 2nd gen 3G variant. Colors look better over here, better sharpness as well. You can see right here in these image samples far better color reproduction over here. The dynamic range is better over here too. Even moving objects are captured better. Yes, the colors are sometimes a bit oversaturated, but more details and less noise with the Snapdragon 410 chipset. It has a different ISP. The images did turn out better than I expected this time around. Now this is an HDR shot. Here too, natural colors. You can see the comparison on the left non-HDR, on the right with HDR, better colors, more sharpness as well. Overall, the camera performs better on the 4G variant. You can also record 720p videos with the 4G variant while the 3G variant only supported up to 480p. Although videos still don't turn out that crisp, they are a bit soft to my liking. Have a listen to the audio. But still colors do turn out quite well in videos. There is no continuous autofocus available over here. Now this is the headset you get within the box similar to what we have seen previously from Motorola. These sound alright, a bit tinny, just okay for listening to music. I would recommend getting your own pair. Now you do have an equalizer built in. The speakerphone should have been slightly louder. But due to its front facing position, it does get a few brownie points from me. FM radio is also supported. It is able to find channels quickly. We didn't have any issues over here with network reception. You can switch between the speakerphone and the headset. 
Now you can easily play 1080p videos on the Moto E 4G variant. On the 3G variant, they did lag a little bit. Sometimes the player crashed as well. That didn't happen over here. And now we are playing a video over YouTube, but YouTube video is still restricted to 480p because that's the maximum supported by this display. Video playback, however, is quite smooth. Now let's come to software. So the Moto E 4G variant is also running Android Lollipop right out of the box. It will be upgraded to Android 5.1 as well. Very smooth interface over here. It's running a stock build of Android 5.0.2 with some Motorola additions, which are always great to have. They are really a value add on the device. Completely stock interface over here. You can see the notification toggles right up top. You cannot customize these. And in about you can see 5.0.2 on the XT1521. That's the Moto E second gen 4G. Now coming to storage out of that 8 gig, you have about 4.57 gigs when you unbox the device. Storage gets filled up quickly. Now apps are movable to the external storage, but app data still needs to be on the internal storage. USB OTG is also supported on the 4G variant, unlike the 3G variant. It works quite well. I'll just play a 720p video sample right off the USB disk. You can see right there, it's playing quite well. Now you have 439 MB of RAM free right now. We are running several apps in the background. Multitasking is actually quite fine on this device. Apps do open up quickly as well, apart from the dialer, which takes the time to load on any Lollipop device. Now you do have some Motorola additions like Moto Assist. You can set up a sleep time, time for meetings where the phone should be silent. You have Moto Actions to open up the camera by double twisting the wrist. And you have Moto Display which shows up notifications right on your screen. You do have screen pinning available over here. So let's say I want to pin just a YouTube app. I can simply do that. You won't be able to access anything else on the device. You can add a password to protect it even more. You also have user accounts available, so you can have several app spaces for different users. Priority interruptions mode is also available over here. So all the bells and whistles that came with Android 5.0 Lollipop work quite well on the Moto E 4G. Coming to web browsing, we have loaded our mobile website on Chrome and it works quite well. Scrolling is pretty smooth. Rendering sometimes can be a bit slow, can be a bit jerky as well. But pinch to zoom and touch response is truly superb on this display. Text does look a bit pixelated over here. It is not the sharpest display available within this price bracket. Now even in terms of general performance, just like the Moto E 3G second gen variant, this phone performs very well. There is no lag in the interface. Apps do open up quickly as well. There is no issue with multitasking. Apps remain open in the background. There are no app crashes. Now gaming performance is actually pretty good on the device. It doesn't matter which high-end game you throw at it, it plays them very well. There is no major lag, no ghosting, no freezing whatsoever. Apps and games do load up quickly as well. Moreover, the Moto E 4G doesn't heat up while playing games. I did notice a little bit of color shifting while playing games. The viewing angles are wide, brightness distortion is not there, but slight color shifting definitely persists. Moreover, the battery life is better than the Moto E 3G variant. Motorola's promise of an all-day battery life with a 2390mAh battery stays strong with the Moto E 4G variant as well. Well folks, this brings us to the end of our review of the Moto E 4G variant. Now just like the Moto E 3G variant, there are some great points about the device. Excellent build quality, good customization, a good enough display, the rear camera does perform better than the 3G variant. But the problems remain here as well. The front-facing VGA camera is of no good use. And priced at Rs. 7999, there are better options with the Redmi 2, Lenovo A6000 Plus which actually comes with 2 gigs of RAM and 16 gigs of storage. Now I believe that Motorola shouldn't have launched the 3G variant. The 4G variant should have been the only one launched priced about at least 500 odd rupees less because even with their great specs the redmi 2 and the lenovo a6000 plus can't beat the moto e in terms of build quality and overall usability we will be back with more do hit that like button if you like this video also do hit that subscribe button if you haven't already subscribed to our channel thanks for watching the video if you have any questions let us in the comment section and as always have a great day